Welcome to my channel. This is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. My name is John and uh, today I'm continuing with my countdown of my top 50 albums that shaped my musical journey. So today I'm going from 30 to 26. So we're pretty much at the halfway point right now. So before I begin, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please subscribe. So I do rock and metal reviews, rankings. I do lists like this and I do a lot more things. I upload frequently, so please um, hit that subscribe button and you will be notified every time I uh, upload a video. So I'm not gonna waste any time. Let me get right into this. Coming in at number 30 is a Pink Floyd album and it is The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Now. This is probably a, a stranger one. You're probably thinking Pink Floyd, so I'm probably gonna say something like The Wall or Animals or Dark Side of the Moon or uh, Wish You Were Here. And those were all a a albums that I listened to growing up. My brother had those and I liked them, but this was the first one that I actually bought by myself. And it was at, during a time when I was into a lot of heavy metal music, but I actually remember buying this because I went to the record store and my intention was buying a Voivod album because the Voivod album at the time did a cover of uh, Astronomy Domini, which was from this album. And I actually went to the record store looking for this Voivod, al Voivod album. But then at the last minute, I decided, hey, let me check out the Pink Floyd. So I looked at, through on the CDs. I go to the Pink Floyd section. I see this. It's a pretty cool, like a trippy uh, cover. And I, I look at the title tracks and I see the uh, Astronomy Domini song. So instead of buying the Voivod album with the cover of it, I decided to buy this one. And I listened to this like so many times, like this album, pretty much I, I brought it with me when I went away to college. And it's a type of album, you know, it has some like elements of heavy metal and this is like 1967 like before even metal even like officially existed. But Astronomy Domini, it's a heavy song and Interstellar Overdrive, that's another really like heavy song. It's like a nine minute song. But it has like these like pretty cool like um, space rock or psychedelic rock trippy songs. I used to listen to this a lot in my dorm room, hanging out with my friends. We would just hang out, chill out. We had some herbal refreshment and we would just like enjoy ourselves just listening to this really great Pink Floyd record and it sounds completely different than their other stuff that you would uh, hear later on. You know, Pink Floyd, actually, if you've heard the album more, they have a song called the Nile song that Voivod also covered. And this is like a grunge song that came out in like the late 60s. It's something you gotta check out. Coming at number uh, 29 is Led Zeppelin IV. And out of all the Led Zeppelins, there, I pretty much could have uh, said any one of them. But this one sticks out for me because I just have these distinct memories of being very young, 9, 10, 11, and having the record in my hand and just going down to my basement and playing it. And this is like basically a perfect album. I gave it a listen again today. It still sounds fresh. I mean, I, I, I enjoyed like every song all the way through. Actually, I gave it two listens today because that's how good, good of an album is. And one thing about this album is uh, that most a lot of people might not talk about is the drumming. John Bonham's drumming, they're like so distinctive. I think if you listen to like the isolated drum tracks of like John Bonham, like you would know exactly like, you would know like that's him. And we don't have that with today's music. You know, musicians today, they use the drum loops or things like that. Like a lot of songs, like they don't have like real drumming on our songs. So this is like real drumming. Like, you know, it's John Bonham. You know, the, the and it's eight perfect songs. Black Dog, really great, like guitar work in this one, you know, rock and roll. That's almost like early, like an ACDC type of song, you know, before they existed. Battle of Evermore, that kind of like makes you feel like you're kind of like in a forest with a bunch of people <laughs> They're playing these like uh, stringed instruments. Stairway to Heaven, you know, I've listened to it a thousand times in my lifetime. I don't get bored. Misty Mountain Hop, kind of a heavy song, has a pretty nice riff. Same with Four Six, really nice come kind of guitar riff on that one. Going to California, really great uh, acoustic number. And When the Levee Breaks, that's actually a cover song. I, I kind of found that out later, but it's another really great uh, 
a great rock song, you know, that's a great way to end the album. And, you know, I can't really say anything bad about this album. It's like one of the perfect albums. Coming in number 28, and the next ones are going to be some uh, like 2000s rock. So it is uh, Toxicity by System of a Down. And this one came out like a couple days or about like a week before 9-11. Uh, like it came out September 4th, 2001. And this is an album, it just, it means a lot to me. I listened to it so much and it's, it came out at a time when like metal was like becoming mainstream like again. I mean like the 90s are over. You know, metal is like back on MTV, it's back on the radio. And these are some like really like heavy songs. The big song on this is Chop Suey and to be honest with you, that one I think I do get a little bored of. But the other ones, um, the, the title track Toxicity, Ariel's Prison Song. I mean, this is a band, it's kind of hard to describe. It's like they're new metal, but they mix a lot of stuff and they mix a lot of different instruments, things like that. They have like two vocalists. They have a Serge Tanakin and Darren Malakin. You know, these songs are like super heavy, they have heavy riffs. You know I mean, some of the vocals are like death metal vocals almost. I can basically listen to this, so this album all the way through. And it's kind of album, there's like a lot of like short songs, you know, like they're like two and three minutes long. But just every song just packs a punch. It's like a 45 minute album, 14 tracks. No other way to describe it, so let, let me move on. Coming in at number 27 is uh, Follow the Leader by Korn. Uh, Korn is one of my favorite bands. Uh, I've been listening to them since their debut in 1994 and they kind of were the pioneers of like this new metal style. And this particular album I chose, I probably could have chose any of the first like five or six albums. I was going to go with Issues, but I, I went with this one because this one has uh, some of their big songs. It has Got the Life, it has Freak on a Leash, and this album also features a lot more like rap rock than like their other albums. There's a lot, there's a, a lot of hip hop on here. There's a song with Ice Cube called Children of the Corn. There's a song with uh, Fred Durst called All in the Family. And that's kind of a fun song. They're kind of like, like doing like, and like kind of like insulting each other, like back and forth, like in good fun. And it's just like this funny song with like Fred Durst rapping and uh, Jonathan Davis, you know, doing his thing. And there's a, a like a bonus, like a hidden track, like for those of you who have the CD, like it was like right after the last song, you know, now with streaming, it's different, you know, you just see it in the playlist. But when you bought the CD, it's like the last song called My Gift to You ended. And then about like 30 seconds later, there's a track called Eric My Eye. And this is a cover of a Cheech and Chong song from there. Up and Smoke album or Up and Smoke album soundtrack. And that's just a really awesome cover song just to end out the album. Coming in at number 26, another new metal band, Linkin Park with Hybrid Theory. Now this is a, a, a band that they kind of got very soft. Like their last album pretty much sounded like Justin Bieber, but their first album, super heavy. It sold like so many millions of copies. It was all over the radio. They have the songs One Step Closer, In The End, Crawling, Paper Cut. This is a band with uh, two lead vocalists. So we have uh, Mike Shinoda who was a rapper and Chester Bennington who was a singer. He was like a metal singer. And they just like went like back and forth in every song. And that's what really made this band unique. You know, they had a, a sound that like no one else had at the time. All over the radio, enormous hits. And this album was so influential. And it, means, it meant a lot to me because this was like the music that I was listening to when I came back from Mexico to the United States like the first time. So for those of you who remember my story about when I turned 50 years old, I went to uh, Mexico for a year and a half and I moved back to the States in the early 2000s. And this was the album I was listening to a lot. I got a job in New York City uh, that was very close to the World Trade Center, which was about like about six months before I came down. And I was working in a language school and, you know, just this album brings back memories of taking the subway, getting out at the World Trade Center and walking two blocks to where my school was. And this album basically brings back lots of memories. So I'm going to uh, close out here. My next video will be uh, 25 to 21. So, yeah, we're coming towards the end of this 
So that's it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below what you thought of these albums. And I'll be back tomorrow with another one. So I will see you later.